Well, good afternoon and welcome to our lunchtime devotional. This is Pastor Jamie. So glad to have you with us today. Coming to you live today from the office here at the church. Had to come out here and do some things, so I had to jump on here. Uh, My wife is working me hard today on my off day, but that's all right. We're going to continue our study this afternoon on the armor and why do we need an armor for anyway. And today we're talking about the helmet of salvation. And we're looking in Ephesians 6, 17, and he said, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We'll look at the first part of that verse today and the second part tomorrow. First part, and take the helmet of salvation. So Paul talks about the helmet of salvation as a part of this armor. And just as we've been doing throughout, we're going to talk about what that helmet meant to the Roman soldier, what a helmet means in general, And what does the Bible mean by salvation and why is it portrayed as a helmet here in these verses in Ephesians? So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to help uh, you pray for any needs that you may have. You place them there in the comment section. We'll pray with you, uh, whether here on Spreaker, through Facebook, send me a text message, however you want to do that. Uh, We'll pray now or we'll pray when we see it. And we will lift those needs up before the Lord in prayer. We had two wonderful services at our church yesterday. So thankful for the way the Lord moved. And uh, if you're tuning in and you attend another church, we pray that you had the same. We're looking forward to a great service Wednesday night and looking forward to this coming Sunday. when We will celebrate our 71st anniversary of our church. I'll be preaching Sunday morning. And then we'll have Duncan Ministries, the Duncan family with us. Sunday night at five o'clock. So if you do not have evening service for some reason this Sunday, come and be with us for that. We'd love to have you as we celebrate 71 years. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll get right into our devotional for today. Father, we're grateful to you for the privilege that we have to come before you this time and this setting and this opportunity daily. We're able to get into your word, but most of all for your word to get into us Not just stay there, but to flow through us because we want to be an open epistle. We want to not just read the word, but become what the word says we are to be. Lord, we know the word became flesh and dwelt among us in order for us to become the word and dwell among the flesh of men as well. And be a shining example of your holiness, your righteousness. And Lord, we just ask you today to anoint this devotional, me to deliver and the listener to receive it and be able to find good place in their hearts today. And we'll just thank you and praise you for what's going to be accomplished in this setting today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So taking the helmet, when Paul wrote to the Ephesians about the helmet of salvation, some of them may have found his analogy to be a familiar one. Uh, We read in the book of Isaiah, as you study there, a description of God shows him as having put on both. We shared this earlier in our study Uh, putting on both the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation. That's found in Isaiah 59 and 17. So in referencing this Old Testament scripture, Paul drives home the point that it's in every sense of the word, the armor of God, the same armor he himself wears, but it also leads us to consider what salvation is and what it has to do with a helmet and what it means for us. So first of all, we want to look at what purpose did the helmet serve in the Roman army? Well, the Roman helmet, just like helmets today, for whatever reason that you may wear them, maybe uh, one of you may ride a skateboard or maybe uh, go out on your bicycle. Uh, When I was growing up, we never wore helmets, but it's probably important that you do. And You see people on motorcycles going 70, 80, 90 miles an hour without a helmet. Uh, Every time I see them, I can't help but to think, dummy, uh, it's very important that you would put a helmet on. It could save your life. And that was the same reason for the Romans wearing that helmet. It protected the head from the attacks of the enemy, from dangers, from from concussions, and all of those type things. So there's some evidence that suggests that the Romans... uh, really had a special ceremonial helmet used in parades uh, 
that denoted also their rank and standing. So that's what the helmet was used for. So what is salvation? Well, salvation basically it just means to be saved or delivered from something. That's the basic definition of salvation. In the New Testament, uh, we see it's generally used to refer to deliverance from the eternal death penalty of sin and deliverance into God's kingdom. Uh, And so we look here and find out that there is a penalty for our sins, uh, and but there is a way to be saved from that penalty. And I, I may be preaching to the choir a little bit here this afternoon with these verses, but who knows who may listen in. So uh, if you're a seasoned Christian and this is uh, uh, elementary to you, pardon me, but I want to still share this. Uh, these scriptures that are very familiar to us, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And then of course, Romans 5, 8, and 10, but God commended His love towards us that while we were, get that, were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means that He didn't intend for us to stay that way. Amen. For more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, how? By the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And of course, John 3, 16, but don't forget verse 17, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Uh, I've got a couple more for you here. 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men, uh, all men. If you've got your Bible open, if you had time to open your Bible to that, or if you want to write it down for later, 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4, and there in verse 4, go ahead and underline all all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And then finally, Luke 1, 77, to give knowledge of salvation to His people by the remission of their sins. And what does this mean? Every human being has thought and acted in ways that are abominable, abominable to God. Our sins break God's beautiful living laws designed for our good. So sin is so vile to God that it required the death penalty. So God's justice requires that penalty, but God's loving mercy provided the most incredible substitute. Jesus Christ was willing to die in our place. To be saved, we need a Savior. Isn't that wonderful today? And so how do we receive salvation? Well, Acts 2 and 38, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's important to understand that salvation cannot be earned. That's a gift from God and not something we can obtain through the right actions, thus obligating God to give it to us. Still though, as we've seen in the scriptures that we've covered so far, repentance, abhorring our sins and seeking God's forgiveness and help to obey his laws, faith, accepting Christ's sacrifice and coming to the knowledge of truth are all steps in accepting this free gift. So, But in no way do these efforts make up for our sins that cause the death of our Creator and Savior. So, is salvation permanent? Irrevocable gift? Or does it have to be maintained? Well, the New Testament tells us that we have been saved, Ephesians 2 and 5, that we are being saved, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, and that we will be saved in Matthew 10, 22. So what does this mean for us? Well, Ephesians 2, 4 through 8, but God who is rich in mercy for His great love wherein He loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace, are you saved? 
and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come He might shew uh, the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. For by grace uh, are you saved through faith, not of yourself, it's the gift of God. So Paul was making it clear that you have been saved equates to the forgiveness of sins and coming under God's grace that we've been taken off of death row, so to speak. Then 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, For the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness, but unto us who are saved is the power of God. So salvation can also describe the ongoing conversion process. Paul call, also calls this being transformed by the renewing of our mind in Romans 12 and 2. And this involves having God's laws written in our minds, meditating on them so that we can follow after them. Hebrews 10, 16, Psalms 119, verses 97 through 99 are good resources for that. We saw in the lesson on the breastplate of righteousness, God expects us to obey his commandments. Then we find in Matthew 10, 22, ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. In, in the end shall be saved. So our ultimate salvation depends on whether or not we choose to endure until the end. So what does salvation have to do with a helmet? Well, let's see if we can break that down here. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 through 11, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God not has pointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Wherefore, comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as also you do. So we can receive tremendous hope and comfort by focusing on the incredible sacrifice that Christ gave to save us and the amazing kingdom that is the goal of our salvation. This hope works like a helmet to protect our minds from the discouragement and despair in this world. So we need that helmet, that helmet of salvation. Now, what does that mean? Helmet of salvation in our mind. I know it's not a think so, hope so, maybe so. When you got the helmet of salvation on, you're reminded and that is protected and that thought is covered and that thought is there from the onslaught of the enemy that's going to try to attack your mind and tell you you ain't even saved, but you got that, you reach up there and you know I've got that helmet of salvation on that protects that hope. It protects my mind from discouragement and despair that you don't say, I hope I'm saved. I think I'm saved. I believe I'm saved. But it's a no-so. I've got a hope that's settled in Christ Jesus. And John 17, 15, 16 says... I pray not, just Jesus talking here, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They're not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So Christian friend, uh, we have been called out of this world. Uh, and so because of that, we've called out for a purpose, but we remain in it, but we're not of it, uh, but we remain separate from it. Uh, why? Because we're just strangers and pilgrims, as Peter said, passing through our way uh, of living and our way of thinking should be different from the world. We've developed the mind of Christ in accordance to Philippians 2 and 5. And as we've seen, that means having God's law written on our hearts and our minds. So why? So we can remember to always obey God. Oh, but there is an enemy. As Brother Paul shared with us last night, always trying to reattach those chains that will bind. Peter said this, get this, Right here, 1 Peter 5, 8, 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, our enemy, he hates that we have chosen this path and will stop at nothing to destroy us because of it. And just as the helmet protects the vital uh, the vital but the vulnerable head from otherwise fatal blows. The hope of salvation can protect our faults uh, from our enemies' attacks and temptations to disobey God. Matthew 13 and 22, He also that received the seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word 
and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. So without the helmet of salvation, we will be unprotected from the cares of this world that bombard our thoughts and our feelings. And imagine not knowing what the future ultimately holds, the worries and the problems produced by living in this world would overwhelm us. But Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? So with the helmet securely fastened, we can have the same confidence that Paul did that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to what's going to be revealed within us. So we understand that it doesn't matter what happens to us now, no matter what trials we face, we know at the end of all waits God's kingdom and an eternity of His perfect reign. And what could be better than that, friend? How do we keep the helmet secure? Psalms 3 and 8 says, Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Remember, salvation comes from God. And God is on our side. And if we commit to fully follow and obey Him, it is impossible for us to lose this battle or our salvation. So we we can make sure that we're committed to Him, that we're not turning back. There's no reason that we can't stay saved. There is a possibility to backslide, but not if we stay anchored in Him. So stay anchored in Him. Salvation, we're fighting for the end of that kingdom. Never lose sight of it. The coming kingdom with this worldwide peace and prosperity, no matter what comes, no matter what vicious attacks our enemy lands on us, no matter how long that we have to remain in this battle, we're moving slowly at times, but unstoppably towards an eternal victory. What wouldn't we do? What wouldn't we give for that? And Paul said this to Timothy, for I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I've finished the course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness uh, which the Lord the righteous shall judge shall give me in that day and not to me only but all in the love of my appearing Paul had this vision he valued his salvation and he diligently fought the fight the end of his life grew near he knew a crown was waiting uh, and understanding this today and closing this devotion uh, on the helmet of salvation uh, Paul, when Paul awakes in the first resurrection, he will trade in his soldier's helmet for a far more glorious, uh, imperishable, and eternal crown of righteousness, the crown of victorious soldier of Christ. And we too, he said, not to me only, but all of those uh, that love his appearance. So we can be assured of victory so long as we, just like the apostle Paul, faithfully follow our God and His commandments from our heart and our mind. And to do that, we got to keep the breastplate on to protect our heart and the helmet on to protect our mind. I done and got long-winded again on you today. I apologize. Father, we love you today and thank you that you give us a helmet, a salvation, a hope, a a protection of our mind because the enemy loves to bombard the mind. Whoever's mind he's bombarding today, help them to make sure that they keep the helmet of salvation on uh, and resist the enemy uh, and recognize his attacks and stay firm uh, in the faith and stay committed uh, to the purpose. Let the thoughts of our minds, uh, oh God, be acceptable in thy sight, Lord. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, thoughts of our mind be accepted on your side our strength and our redeemer we praise you and thank you for it all in jesus name amen amen praise the lord i got a little preachy on y'all today i love y'all and i look forward to being back with you tomorrow as we talk about the only offensive part of this armor the sword of the spirit the word of god love you have a great monday afternoon